as the first speaker this morning, the Italian Minister of Sustainable Infrastructure and Transport, Enrico Giovannini, which is remotely connected. Uh, welcome and buongiorno, Ministro Giovannini. Uh, colleagues and friends who organized uh, this great event, congratulations for this fantastic uh, two days meeting. I uh, really would like uh, to thank uh, F20, ASVIS and the others uh, who organized uh, this effort. And uh, it's quite remarkable that uh, during this week and the following weeks in which uh, the G20, uh, different uh, formations, but also the uh, break up uh, and the youth uh, for climate, I would say the entire world is trying to identify not only solutions, but quick solutions, because we need uh, to speed up the transformation of our economies and societies. In this perspective, the role of foundations is absolutely vital. Foundations uh, not only represent uh, an opportunity for uh, dialogue between uh, different experts, but in several cases, they implement projects that change people's life, that change uh, our uh, environment, that improve uh, people's quality of life. Of course, uh, the uh, efforts that we have to make uh, this year in particular, but also in the following years, is huge. And uh, COP26 will be a unique opportunity to compare the different perspectives that different parts of the world have shown so far. But uh, I'm uh, quite hopeful that uh, important uh, uh, agreements will be reached. Of course, the COVID-19 crisis didn't help, on the contrary, push away the entire world from uh, the, uh, the movement towards the achievement of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals agreed by the UN General Assembly in 2015. On the other hand, we know that uh, this uh, uh, horrible uh, pandemic opened the eyes to many people around the world, and especially in developed countries. And also in Italy, more and more people have understood uh, the interrelationships among uh, economy, society, environment, and also institutions, the four pillars of sustainable development. How can we speed up the change? How can we learn and benefit from uh, the results of the work of uh, F20 and other G20 formations. First of all, listening. Listening uh, to the experts and uh, the incredible panels that uh, have been organized uh, these days in the F20 event tell us uh, uh, really a lot. And uh, the second point is to look at these issues from uh, an interdisciplinary uh, point of view, or even transdisciplinary, as uh, some people say. New disciplines are emerging, for example, integrating agriculture and ecology, or uh, uh, IT and uh, uh, other dimensions of our life. And even economics need a profound and in-depth change. I had the opportunity to discuss recently the report uh, prepared uh, on request of President Macron by uh, Blanchard and, uh, um, um, well, I forgot the, the second <laughs> name, sorry, and Tirol, two very important economists who have been uh, very important also in the training of economists uh, which are now maybe ministers or uh, advisors 
to ministers or people who are leading companies. One of the key messages of this report is that uh, we have to abandon the idea of doing something before, for example, re-stimulating our economies to go back uh, to the situation where we were before the pandemic, and then look into the environmental and social uh, problems. We have to do everything at the same time. And this requires a big uh, cultural shift. In our uh, experience, this is exactly what we are trying to do at the Ministry for Sustainable Infrastructures and Mobility, mm -hmm. new name uh, of uh, a ministry which is absolutely central in the implementation of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan with 62 billion euros to be invested in the next uh, five years. But we shouldn't focus only on the national plan for recovery and resilience because we have many other funds that need to be oriented in the same direction towards ecological transition, digital transition, uh, improvement of people's well-being, increase of uh, companies' competitiveness, respecting the environment. And beside the fact that uh, these investments will change the way in which, uh, for example, our railway uh, system will work, not only through high-speed trains, but also connecting airports with trains, uh, uh, ports with trains, and so on and so forth, greening uh, the ports, the fleet, and so I, I will not list all the interventions that we are already implementing. Beside that, we need to change the way in which we operate to make decisions. For example, we have designed the guidelines for preparing the projects, economic and financial projects on for tenders. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, then uh, will become uh, uh, public works and so on. Now, all the companies who will prepare their proposals, projects, need to show how that particular project is going to have an impact, positive impact, on uh, climate targets or reduction of uh, uh, pollution, respect the uh, human rights and workers' rights, and so on and so forth. This is a, a structural change that uh, even uh, for projects uh, that help in going towards the ecological transition will boost the way in which uh, uh, the transition will happen. Let me add uh, three points and then I will close. The first is about uh, the uh, integrated approach to policy making. But the same applies also to private companies, and the same applies also to foundations, especially large foundations. Especially, uh, we know that uh, some uh, uh, foundations, including some Italian foundations, I'm sure that we will listen uh, about this uh, in a few minutes, have chosen the 17 Sustainable Development Goals as an uh, overarching uh, direction, overarching uh, and cultural scheme. But this is not uh, easy to achieve because uh, governments, uh, companies, foundations may have very different activities that need to be integrated into the Sustainable Development Goals framework. This is a challenge, it is a cultural challenge, but also requires uh, uh, models and uh, simulation models, for example, for policy making, in order to assess how one particular policy action impacts on different uh, uh, targets and goals of the uh, SDGs. We have done that in uh, the document uh, where we describe our uh, medium-term strategy for infrastructure and transports, where we simulated the impact of sustainable of uh, our recovery resilience plan 
on uh, uh, the 17 goals. Just let me give you a um, few examples. 70% of the 62 billion euros that we are managing uh, will contribute to fight against the climate crisis. 56% uh, of our share of the plan uh, will go to the south vis-a-vis uh, -vis the average of the national plan uh, of 40%. Through the uh, investments in the south uh, and also in uh, inner areas, we will reduce by 38% the inequality index in terms of access to railways. Uh, you may find uh, on our website uh, also mm -hmm. some English slideshows where everything is described. Let me just conclude uh, with uh, one uh, point uh, that is needed. Public funds are not enough to change uh, our world. This is why they must be coupled and reinforced by private uh, uh, money. Thanks to the uh, policy, uh, monetary policies, very expens uh, expansionary monetary policies um, implemented over the last few years, there is a huge amount of liquidity around the world. And even in Italy, notwithstanding uh, the hard crisis that we faced last year, the uh, saving rate has increased. So we have a huge opportunity to mobilize these additional savings towards the same uh, targets and goals. This is where foundations who have an active role in terms of implementing projects on the territories may really uh, contribute to this cultural shift and uh, push uh, uh, towards the use, for example, of uh, social bonds, green bonds, and other social impact uh, financial uh, instruments. People want to make an impact. People want to make a difference. And uh, we need uh, to show to, the, uh, to these people that it's feasible, it's not uh, rocket science, and uh, that results can happen in order to avoid the greenwashing. So let me stop here thanking again the organizers for this great event and I wish you a very fruitful discussion and I look forward to receiving the results of your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Giovannini. It was great listening to the fact that in the guidelines and priority of the Italian government in approaching the recovery and resilience plans, it resonates main, many of the messages and the recommendation that here the foundation community is discussing. And I know that you are an expert on that as you launched also ASVIS in Italy and sustainable development has always been one of your I mean, key points. So thanks again, Professor, and have a good work. And uh, with this, with this, and the, uh, as Minister Giovannini was mentioning the role of foundation, 